hit this. I'm gonna hit the go live button. And then we are going to. I'm gonna pair it with the snap of a crack. Mm. Mm hmm. I think we're live. <laughs> you have a whole boom mic, dude. You can't do that right into the boom mic. Oh my god! I was trying to do some ASMR. That is not Lacroix as, ASMR. As pleasant as the ASMR I listen to. <laughs> Welcome to the live stream. I think that you can hear all. Can we hear you, Brett? Yeah, definitely. Probably too much. Probably too much. Yeah. Do you like that I got the music from the video going here? How about that curveball of a song you threw in there? You like that? How yeah. I just blended these two yeah. together? Yeah. Um, I, the, felt, I felt the vibe of your group was more the one... The, the, the hip-hop? <laughs> the one song. <laughs> the one song about getting money since you were all just Instagram models on that yeah, log totally, the whole day. Totally. <sighs> well... This is the live stream. Welcome. We're just waiting for everyone to get in here and then we're gonna get into it. I think this is my new thing. After we, after I hike and do these videos, I think I wanna do live streams kind of breaking them down. Cause it used to be like, remember in the beginning, it was like we were, we were filming the, the directions. During it. And we don't do that yeah. anymore. Hey Brett, get out of the car. Go shoot that sign <laughs> that sign that tells you to turn right yeah. at you know uh redfish lake but now we don't do that and i kind of think this is a fun way for one me to get the live stream reps that i need because i just don't get the reps of doing this of even setting it up of having a, like we're starting to just get a consistent look to the live stream so it gives me a a little bit more gets people used to it having a live stream afterwards. I'm gonna do another one tomorrow about uh, med kits and what you need to have no. in your med kit. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. I've got a medical professional coming in to actually break that down because I don't know what I'd actually do if I got hurt out there except call the people from Garmin to come get me like a little, <laughs> like a little wuss. Um, and I really wanted to break down this trip because I know I'm kind of getting the sense it wasn't your favorite, but I thought it was like a really good intermediate overnighter. Like I had, um, I had a nice lady reach out to me on Instagram who was looking to do something with her daughter and it's her first backpacking trip it sounded like. She said she can't do too much uphill and we're gonna get into how to stay away from the uphill on this trip because you got stuck on the uphill. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna butt in there, but but yep, I you got did it. not. Um, and it's it was ten point three miles around. There's eighteen hundred seventy three feet of elevation gain. By the way, do you know how they count elevation gain? Do you know what that I means? Don't. Elevation gain. How do they count it, John? I had to look it up, and the most common way people do elevation gain is they're just counting the uphill so if you have a lake so it doesn't get the dips doesn't get the dips so if you go up 200 feet down 50 back up 200 to a lake even though that lake is 350 feet from where you started that's 400 feet of elevation gain they don't count the downhill I mean, that's what most of the hiking books, that's what, how you should be reading it in a hiking book. If there's, uh, there's, there was three different ways to do it, but that's the most common way. So when you see like 1,873 feet of elevation gain at the Prairie Miner Loop, that means you're going to go up, have that much uphill. And is track. that just like you take elevation of the top, subtract the elevation of the bottom, and that's your gain? No. No, no, no. That is not oh. it. Were you not listening to the dude's story? <laughs> it, it's 350 feet above you. Yes. But you hike up, let's just say 500 feet 
hike down 500 feet, then hike up another 500 feet, that's a thousand feet of elevation gain. Cause you did a thousand feet uphill in your whole trip. Okay. But if you go up a thousand feet and then come down a thousand feet, you're technically level from where you started at the same level, but you had a thousand feet of elevation gain. Was math not your best subject, Pret? Everyone at home probably gets it. <laughs> I think everyone at home does not care about elevation, how to calculate elevation. I think it's important because when you're telling people like, hey, you know, you threw out a number like what we, I just threw out, 1873, I think a lot of people are at home are like, well, what the, what the hell does that mean? Like, is that hard? Is that not hard? Because uh, this lady, she was saying she could do, she was, she was looking for a trip around eight miles, and then she said she can only do some uphill. And that's broad. Like, what do you mean some uphill? And the only way I can, I can technically say it is like, there's, you're going to do 1,800 feet of uphill. I think that's the easiest way to, to tell someone. Um, the one I did last week was 8,000, over 8,000. So, yeah, it was basically like Bora and a half with a backpack. Yeah. So, I think this is a really good intermediate one. Um, let's uh, let's take a look here at the. Uh, I've got this fun, fancy thing here. Hi, Pamela. Hi, the Idahoan. Yolo. So to gauge the exercise, you will put into a hike. Exactly. Thank see Brett. And you guys all. <laughs> I just go to all trails, and it'll either say easy, medium, strenuous, hard, whatever. Oh and I'm God. like, all right, cool. I trust yeah. them. Uh, by the way, that was that's a good place to start. So normally, I would have a book here, and I'd be telling everyone, hey, pick up this book if you want your. This is the first one of the first trips I've done. I didn't have any materials because you just told me I found this hike. So how did no, you find this hike? No, I didn't. My friend told me about it. She was like, hey, you know, I'm, what about this hike, this hike, and this hike in the area? And I had no idea. So I sent it to you and figured, <laughs> you know, you do it. I, I think I said, research. I don't know what, I don't know what the other option was in the area, but, you know, we were kind of looking for something, um, not like particularly near Sun Valley, but um, kind of like off the beaten path. We didn't want to go right to the, like, to the heart of the sawtooth. Yeah. yeah, we wanted something kind of a little bit out of the way. So we were thinking Cabin Creek at first. Mm. Um, That's right. You talked to me about Pat Cabin Creek, but yeah. we'd already done that. Right, and we wanted something a little different. And then she texted me a couple of names of some lakes. And, uh, you know, when you Google, you know, Prairie or Minor Lake, the, the picture is, you know, pretty nice because it's, it's not quite sawtooth you know, beautiful, but it's, you know, in this massive, like, bowl um, that kind of surrounds the lake. Yeah, so that's Prairie Lake. Yeah, and, um, yeah, that's the other thing is, like, oh, I'm going to turn that off. We don't have to hear me lament too much. Yeah, you're kind of sad at the beginning or something. I was just super anxious on that one. I don't know why. But yeah, I was anxious. Didn't I feel anxious? I didn't. I didn't get our epic cribbage match even on camera, Brett. Like, where you finally won. You did not record very much. No. When, when we were there. No, not really. It's kind of like you got me with my shirt off and like my COVID thirty. Um, <laughs> that was like the only thing you showed. I've seen you before COVID. I think that thirty was there before. No. Um, that is the other thing about this trip is. Um, you know, it's not, it, it is in the Sawtooth, but you go through Sun Valley to get to what is Prairie Creek Trailhead. So mark that down. It's really easy to Google. If you just Google the Prairie Creek Trailhead, it's three hours from Boise. If you go through Stanley like Brett did because he wanted Stanley Baking Company. We only did it on the way back though. And it was like three and a half, 345 to get back. Yeah. But it, I mean, that was a, that's also a good way to do it. If, you know, I wanted to rush to and from home, so I just went through Sun Valley, but you can go up, you can do that trip one overnight, and then you guys went back, you guys hit Redfish, mm -hmm. did some paddle boarding, and mm -hmm. then went home, so that's a good way to do it. So the trailhead is Prairie Creek Trailhead, and then 
yeah, three hours from Sun Valley. It's a beautiful trip. Brett found it on all trails. So the first thing to know here, I'm gonna pause this real quick and show you guys a map here. So there's two ways you can go, obviously, is one is uh, clockwise, one is counterclockwise. So here we have Google Earth. And um, here's our trailhead right here. And if I back out, you can see where we're at. So this is 70, so there's Sun Valley right here, catch them. And then here's Stanley, so it's right in the middle of it. So mm -hmm. if you come through, uh, if you come through Boise, obviously, you know, it's over here. You, the fastest way is to go from Boise through Mountain Home, up this way, up through uh, Ketchum, which is the faster way and the much less pretty way. <laughs> uh, but it'll shave 45 minutes off I mean, your time. When, whenever I go backpacking, it kind of seems like I'm always going, you know, to the Sawtooth or McCall. I'm always, you know, in Stanley, and I never go through Sun Valley. And this was the first trip where we kind of went through Sun Valley. And it was it was kind of a nice change. You know, there's quite a bit there. That's if true. we forgot anything, there's outfitters, um, tons of eating options. And it was quick. I mean, it, it was probably three hours there. Um, and yeah. then from the trailhead to Stanley was like an hour. Yeah. And it, it actually took quite a bit longer than the other way. Yeah. And the trailhead is right off 75. And this road right here, this is another thing. It's the uh, nicest road ever. It's the it's a super nice road, which in for a lot of these hikes, get near a trailhead, that is not always a given. You can have something like Hell Roaring Lake, which is a super easy hike and really nice and really pretty. And that drive is going to damage your car. <laughs> like, unless you have a big super duty truck getting to that trailhead. Uh, is tough and the parking lot i made a big deal about the parking lot so we might as well talk about it you saw the parking lot in the video but it's this nice big parking lot which is also something that you don't always find at the trailhead i know a lot of people will go to tin cup trailhead which leads you to alice lake it's at pettit lake it's a popular one in the sawtooth and it's a zoo parking the parking lot here there was plenty of parking so that's another great thing that sign-in sheet as well was not, you're not in the Sawtooth Wilderness, so don't jump on me for the drone. You're outside the Sawtooth Wilderness, you're in the Sawtooth Forest, but that sign-in sheet is just, just, you know, for a safety measure to get lost. The other thing I wanna mention is, there is another lake that we did not go to, but we saw, you see signs on yep. the way, and that is this Mill Lake. I looked it up, it's a four mile out and back, but you do, and here's that elevation gain again, 1131 feet of elevation gain so in two miles you're going up yeah it's a super uphill even though it's shorter it's really uphill i saw a lot of people had signed in to go there i'm guessing that's a really popular day trip out and back um, but normally you take off from the prairie creek trailhead and you're just kind of like it's pretty level right yeah a couple stream crossings super you know slight incline but you know really easy real pretty until you get to that that junction which i have marked right here and there's two ways you can go at this point and brett and i both did different ways which was interesting to hear because i spent two nights out there brett did this as you should it's just a one night trip honestly i just i was just messing around uh whoa I cut out. That's been happening on that monitor. Don't be alarmed, Brett. It just might happen. Um, it just scared me. I went this way and went to Prairie first. And the height, and that is just, yes, you're going uphill, but it's gradual. And you can see on this map, that makes it much longer, you know, instead of cutting here and going all the way up to Minor Lake. And I think that's where you got in trouble because Minor Lake is at, 8,700, uh, 8,785 feet. It's the, it's the taller of the two lakes. Mm -hmm. It's the higher of the two lakes. And you can well, see- yeah, you, look from the cutoff to yeah. Minor Lake. Yeah. Look how short that yeah. is. And you're gaining more elevation. Right, exactly. So that's, that's the point I'm trying to make. If you want 
yes, it's farther, but if you want less walking uphill, like a more enjoyable trip, I liked going to Prairie and then to Minor. You did go to Prairie the next day. No, so... <laughs> no? Okay, so, well, here's the thing. So, remember, we did. We kind of, like, you know, we put down our stuff, set up camp. Yeah. We went, yeah. gone for a couple hours, came back, and you were asking people what they thought of it. You know, and they were like, you know, two out of ten. Yeah, kind of you like, guys didn't like Everyone it. was talking shit about it. And uh, as I'm, like, looking at this map, zoom in at Prairie Lake. We didn't even make it to Prairie Lake. See the those little guys? Oh, that's we where thought, you went? <laughs> we thought that was Prairie Lake. And I am just now realizing this. Because we saw it. You were talking about like a nice campground yeah, and like, like beaches. Yeah. And this was just lined with like weeds. And yeah. uh, it was really pretty, but it was like a small lake with, you know, there was no beachfront access, no camping spots. And we were like, what the hell is this? It's tiny. Oh, now when you watch the video... Did you notice? Would you watch in the drone? Well, that's footage where in my suspicion and, and being started. Like, I'm like, I don't remember it looking like that. Yeah, I'm like, wait, that's way, you know, way bigger than I thought. Yeah. Okay. So we didn't even make it. Okay. Oh. Well, that. Uh. Yeah, because yeah. So we cut like right at the beginning, um, like up a little bit now. Well, what do you mean? So like we we like just cut over right here uh -huh. and just stayed there, uh -huh. and we were like, oh well, this is. You know, this isn't very a cool. pond. Yeah, it's yeah, a it's pond. a pond. We're like, yeah. why? Why did he like this? Because you had, you know, pretty good things to say about yeah. Prairie Lake. Yeah, and you saw in the video, like the drone. I mean, I opened with a shot of Prairie Lake. Um, that we'll jump back into real quick. But like, yeah, you come in, and if you're doing the day hike, you kind of come in. I think right here, around right here, and it's real pretty. You see back to the to the the mountain behind us and then you can walk around and my campsite was right here and it's there was another guy that was right here just hanging out for the day before leaving um and yeah uh side note there are no fish in these lakes and i just went fishing again i'm get like i'm getting pretty good at it you will see fish if there's fish in the lakes it's like firecrackers going off you didn't even we didn't even see fish jump there's no, no fish there's there was nothing. no fish so if you're looking to fish, I guess these aren't your legs. Um, so yeah, so don't do what Brett does, did. <laughs> don't give up early. But you're not gonna give up early because you're gonna go the way John went and you're gonna go right. uh, counterclockwise right. through the loop. Right, so this is going to give you, so I think it was what, like six miles to here and then two miles to here. So you're gonna have like a, a, like a between a six to eight mile day, it felt really short, honestly. Um, a six to eight mile day, you'll probably get to Prairie. It depends on what time you start, but if you start at 10, you'll get there kind of midday. And then, yes, the trip between Prairie and Minor is a little bit more uphill, but it's, it's not that bad. And then, obviously, after Minor, this was a real steep, you went up this. Yeah, like, <laughs> going up it was pretty rough. You guys, so I came in from Norton Peak. So I had gone up to Norton Peak like you see in the video. So right here from the campsite we stayed at, there's a trail. I wonder if you could see it if I zoom in. Yeah, you can see it right here. There's a trail that runs up the side of this. And you can actually get up here to to this little saddle right here, which is where I was. And then you can actually continue down if you want to on the other side. And these are the Norton Lakes over here. Oh. Yeah, you've heard of these? Those look pretty. Yeah, they were, um, even though it was covered in smoke. But these are the Norton Lakes. So really, I mean, there's so much you can do in the, uh, in the Sawtooth, but you can, there's another trailhead over here. You can do this as a through hike and go from here through the Norton Lakes, through Minor Lakes, and out here. I mean, that's obviously more logistics for you, but there's a lot of variation that you can do around this. Norton Peak is at 10,336 feet. So um, I kind of hiked up to that just to get a get a look, and I was there super early because I left yeah. Prairie Lake. That was your second day, so you only yeah. had to go from Prairie Lake to Minor Lake. Yeah, and I was just kind of waiting for you guys. Yeah. We got back at the same time, and you guys looked more exhausted than me. Yeah. You were like, geez, that hike was ridiculous. And I was like... I mean, the pack makes all the difference. Yeah, that's that extra true. 40 pounds. Um, so if you do it the way that I said, 
um, come on, John, what is that? Counterclockwise? That's counterclockwise. Counterclockwise, you're going to have a nice steady up. It's 10.3 miles. You can do it all in a day. Most people can do it in a day. You don't even have to backpack if you don't want to, especially without that pack. It'll be super easy. Um, there was good camping at Minor Lake right here. There is camping at Prairie. Don't let Brett fool you. Uh, Prairie Pond. I did go look. You can see there was this was there was a lake behind Minor Lake. I did go look at that. It's a swamp, so there's no need for you. I didn't even add like drone footage of it to the video because it looked like shit. So don't be like, ooh, what's that? I want to go see it. Um, I mean, you can if you want, but it's not worth it. Um, and then from minor, yeah, it's just a nice, easy out, super pretty. And this is all downhill right back here. The other thing I will say about this, um, this, this trip is I don't, I didn't take a map. Like, do you think you needed a map? No, but I never take a map. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what does that well, even you, mean? I, sorry, you usually have the book, so I guess I just rely on you. Uh, I mean, most of the places I, I go, it's, you know, like Idaho has such well-maintained trails. There's always signs. It's always pretty straightforward. Um, I just did. So I just did. I see Isaac. Isaac, welcome to the live stream. Isaac just joined the live stream. We were talking in the last live stream, Isaac, about... Goat Lake, not Goat Lake in the Sawtooth, but the Goat Lake, uh, which is Idaho's highest mountain lake. It's at 10,500 feet. I just did that. Um, I, I, I seriously almost died. <laughs> like, like it was a insane hike. They do have golden trout in that lake, Isaac. I caught two. Um, they're big, uh, big cutthroat. And then, yeah, golden trout, which looks like a cutthroat with like a, like a yellow, a yellow shimmer on them. It was, it was really cool. But I met a guy there who recognized me, who was in a little bit of trouble. He hadn't prepared right, and he, I had to give him my map, because he was uh, somewhat lost. And I still had the Garmin as a backup and a printout, as well. Uh, and I, I went through it on the last live stream. Even if you don't have a Garmin, by the way, you can look up Google Earth. This Google Earth Pro is free to download if you want it. So I highly recommend looking up Google Earth. I think it's much more trust. I don't trust. I don't use all trails. He was using Gaia. I don't use any of that shit. It. I mean, I'm just, I don't trust others online. I don't trust people online. I don't know why you trust people on light, Brett, to tell you that this trail is moderate. I'm more, I'm more and concerned you can go. about the reviews of the, the That's trail. why you invited me. You're like, oh, I don't want to do any research. John, no do you, do you want to come so you can plan it? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I mapped everything out. I usually map stuff out on Google Earth before all that happens. Is that a little hot for you, buddy? I just I don't know where I want it. You don't, you don't know where you want it? You don't want it to look like there's a penis in your face. <laughs> I'm just going to turn around for a minute. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's the, that's the Prairie Miner loop. Uh, we don't really have to make each one of these live streams an hour and a half like I normally do. So if you have any questions about the Prairie Miner loop, um, oh, look, you married, you have a girlfriend, Brett, should be used to coming up short. <laughs> That's that's right. Brett's been sing <laughs> Brett's been single too long, so he's not sure. Uh, oh, Pamela. So Pam was the was the lady that asked me uh, about a trip. So Pam, that's the trip um, that I think you and your daughter would like. It's it's nice. I think you said your your specs your specs were you wanted three hours away from Boise. That's three hours away from Boise. Um, so coming up. Brett, we're supposed to go to the Sawtooth. Yeah. A couple weeks. I have to postpone that trip. Oh, you son of a bitch. So I got to. Is that why I saw John and the Sawtooth get deleted from the calendar? Yep. Oh, no. Did you see what got added to the calendar? Uh, let me check. So I got a phone call. John Shoot Row. Yep. 
So I got a phone call. I don't know what that means. I got a, got a phone call a couple of days ago. Uh, Row Adventures out of Coeur d'Alene has pioneer, partnered up with this, this electric bike company called Pedigo. You've never heard of Pedigo? <laughs> no, are they big? Yeah, they're huge. So they're doing a new trip from Spokane to Coeur d'Alene and back on electric bikes. And Roe is organizing it. You go from hotel to Whoa. hotel, six nights. You, uh, you're on the Hiawatha Trail. You're on the trail of the Coeur d'Alene. Like what we should have been doing in North Idaho over the winter. And, but in, in nice weather. Yeah. And they asked me to fly up and go do that trip with them. What the so hell? I'm going to be doing that <laughs> while the smoke clears that in the That definitely tooth. sounds like a shoot where they need a second shooter. Uh, they asked for Chad. <laughs> he, he couldn't go, though. Um, so that's going to be a super fun one that I'm going to do. And then we're, I'm going to How many miles is that? I don't know. Because those bikes have a range of like 40 miles tops. But, you, but you, you, uh, you charge your battery at night. So they give you your battery. So you're only doing like a 30-mile day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, those trips, they're super cushy. Um, they're... One day you're just in Coeur d'Alene, like hanging out. Uh, so it's like six days, mostly just Spokane to Coeur d'Alene's not that far. You're just trying to hit those like real pretty sections. And then I have an e-bike and they're also gonna have like a van that I'm gonna be in and shooting the bikers from. So that seems fun. And it seemed like the right decision cause this smoke is so bad. So I figured we could push the sawtooth out a couple weeks hopefully the smoke clears and uh it's gonna make for some chilly sawtooth evenings yeah it also makes for less people yeah. are we idahoans yep born and bred right john yep yep totally <laughs> no but i've been out here over 20 years i wasn't born here but i've been here over 20 years are you born here no chicago oh. But I've been here 17 years. Has anyone been here? No, we're, we're, the, we're the first generation of our family. We were dragged here by our parents mm -hmm. and uh, back when it was just potatoes and not known for the hiking. Yeah, I think if you've been is. here before Eagle Road was like the village, that yeah. was just like sod farms and <laughs> cows and stuff. I think if you're there, you know, if you've been here longer than that, you're a native. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, it, I, it's pretty crazy that people are like, where's your Idaho paperwork? Were you born here? Let me, let me see. Where's your everyone's card? Got, everyone's got that uh, sticker on the back of their car that says native or born and bred. And I even find myself doing it sometimes. I worked with a gal the other day, and I'm like, are you from Boise? And she's like, no, but I've been here a while. And I was like, oh, how long have you been here? And she's like, two and a half years. And I'm like, that's not a while. <laughs> did, did you and say she, Boise or Boise? Oh, I didn't check. I don't care about that, how they pronounce yeah, it. Or you, you say Boise still. You'll be in the teeth this weekend. I wish you luck. I just got a text <laughs> saying that it was, it was smoky as hell. So, um, yeah, there's that. Uh, I just got back from a call today. How, how was that? Um, I drove up the other day and it was super bad, but we had a cold front move in yesterday that kind of cleared everything out. That so it? it's it's a lot better now. Um, it's not, I mean, it's not ideal, but it's, yeah, you know, it's not like ideal for cameras, but it's uh, it's pretty good. I mean, it's seventy two. It's it's cooling down. It's gonna get warm again next week, but I think that um, I think as the cold moves through, that smoke will kind of clear. And then we'll hit the sawtooth. It'll be nice and clear. No one will be out there after Labor Day weekend. And uh, we'll get her done. What? You said you were going to spring something on me. Oh, that was it. That I canceled your trip. The trip. Yep. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Sweet. Well, now we'll just, uh, you know, just do something, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> uh, all right. I think that's it. I like I like the short one. I mean, 7:30. I'll get out of here tomorrow. I'm going live again with a spinal surgeon who's going to talk about what you should have in your med kit. I'm also I brought three med kits. 
he is also prepared a lot to talk about it. I also brought three common backpacking med kits and we're gonna go through them and we're gonna, I'm gonna ask him what should be in here, what of this is garbage, how would I use this, um, what kind of injuries can I expect because I think we all, do you even take a med kit? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's always it's like pretty basic. It's always like you're supposed to take a med kit, but I don't. Think I mostly I even take know it for my dog, it. though. Like I'm more worried about ticks and stuff. No, like if he were to get hurt, you know, because he's running all over, and like you know, if he cuts his paw on a rock or something like that, like I'm more worried <sighs> because I can take care of myself for the most part. Um, but if he were to get hurt, that's you know, that's kind of scary. Hmm. So he's not a vet, but if he knew like what. If he's like a pet owner, if he knew like what he would pack in addition for bringing a dog, yeah, because they make whole separate dog, you know, emergency kits. Are you shitting me? <laughs> They're very expensive. Oh my god! <laughs> so uh, if he had any, you know, suggestions or idea for for dogs, you know, so I'll ask him let that. Let me know. Yeah, join us for the live stream tomorrow at seven again for that med kit M monday i hope to have the video out about downhill mountain biking in mccall tamarack brundage jug mountain brett's been hitting tamarack a lot says it's great so that'll be fun a new favorite sport i think yeah we got to get bikes i know i saving up so we're gonna do that and then we'll jump back into the hiking where i go to goat lake in the pioneer mountains and uh almost lose my life so as always thanks for watching we'll see you next time let's fade this out brett bye 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 bye